when we got introduced to this new regime, I thought things were going to be sweet because you have two guys that just, if nothing else, they get it. They understand the basic elements of what needs to be done to get this franchise to the next level. And I got to say, so far, we're in year two. It's still early, but I'm starting to get some serious doubts. And this goes from the GM to the head coach. And I want to first start with the head coach. Last year, year one, 13 and four, that's pretty damn good. If there's anything to improve upon going into year two, it's the play calling. For example, large gaps, routine large gaps of Justin Jefferson not being involved in the offense. Lack of urgency. So last year, the Vikings, the difference in scoring per quarter is astounding because in the first quarter, they were top 10. Second quarter, they were 18th, third quarter, 22nd, and in the fourth quarter, when they were forced to ramp up the offense, they were number one in the league in scoring. So they were just basically on cruise control, just like me in college when I was prepared for a final project three months in advance. Did I work on it incrementally? No. I waited till the night before it was due. And then I would pull an all-nighter in the computer lab, drink coffee, and put together the best damn project you ever saw. Lack of situational awareness. For instance, two plays that stick out from last year, the Washington game. So there was a play where Kirk got dinged up. He had to come out for a play before going back in. In came the backup quarterback, Nick Mullins. And instead of just saying, all right, let's hand the ball off to... Dalvin Cook or Alexander Madison. That way Kirk can get back in. We can get the offense back and rolling again. Instead, he decided with the backup to call a tight end screen to TJ Hawkinson that nearly got blown to smithereens. And also the fourth and eight play to end the season against the Giants in the playoffs where your second best playmaker, TJ Hawkinson, on fourth and eight is running a flat route well short of the sticks, that was a terrible play call. But it's only year one. Give him time to improve. He'll certainly rectify those problems. And I got to say, man, I don't think anything has changed. In fact, some ways it's gotten worse, specifically with the scripted drive. So in the first quarter last year, when they were top 10 in scoring, a lot of that, most of that was due to the scripted drive, the opening possessions. They were really good at turning those drives into touchdowns. That's not the case this year. They're tied for last. They literally score zero points per first quarter. The last two games in particular, Kevin O'Connell has been badly outcoached against Philly. Now, mind you, Philly, what they have to work with, they have an MVP candidate last year in Jalen Hurts. They have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, the best offensive line in football. They have everything working with them in the passing game, but it didn't work for them against the Vikings. What worked for them was running the football. So they said, okay, we're just going to keep doing that until the Vikings stop us. Whereas in that same game where what was working for the Vikings, throwing the ball vertically to your receivers, that was working for the Vikings. Instead, KOC took the opposite approach of Nick Sirianni to say, eh, we'll shy away from that. We'll go back to that here and there. And then against the Chargers, it goes deeper. It was so bad. I rewatched that game yesterday. Kellen Moore did such a good job. I wish that he called plays for us. Think about this. They're receiving weapons that they have. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and their quarterback, Justin Herbert. If I said to you that I think the best mode of action is to try to generate momentum for this offense through Joshua Kelly in order to give opportunities to Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, you would say, oh, you're drunk, and rightfully so. That's essentially what... 
Kevin O'Connell did with the Vikings offense. Kellen Moore said, no, screw this. We're getting the ball to our receivers early and often. So much so, outside of the drive that resulted in the Josh Palmer fumble recovered by the Vikings, that was a three-play drive. Outside of that possession, Keenan Allen was targeted every Chargers drive. Justin Jefferson, he didn't get targeted at all the entire first quarter. That's ridiculous. That has been a constant problem. It seems like it's an every game occurrence, but I'm going to play the law of averages and be nice here and say definitely every other game to where we're saying, are we not going to get the ball to 18? What is happening here? They were deliberately getting the ball to their best playmakers. Jordan Addison, who paired with Justin Jefferson, is the clear foundation wide receiver one and two. Yesterday, played 58 snaps compared to K.J. Osborne's 76. Goal possessions, where you're getting close to the end zone. The play calling is so stagnant. It's like you're trying to fight and scrap your way. You're going to hand the ball off up the gut to Alexander Madison. Whereas the Chargers, they're spreading the ball around. They don't care. You don't know what it is that they're going to do, but it feels like with the Vikings, they catch a tight butt. Even with the weapons that they have in those gold possessions, it's oh, like you can see it in their faces how nervous they are. I just feel like Instead of putting together a coherent locker room, and forget the fact, we're not even, I talked about this yesterday, but it's still mind-boggling to me. Just the fact that the, how nonchalant they were running 29 seconds off the clock before turning the ball over. No sense of urgency whatsoever. That's either on the head coach and or the quarterback. And especially the quarterback, you're a grown-ass man. You're 35 years old. How do you, okay, fine, you can't hear. And I don't want to hear anything about the fans being loud. Oh, the fans are loud. Oh, my God, it's all their fault. Are you kidding me? I don't care that they're loud. Take it upon yourself. Show some initiative if you're the quarterback to say, I can't hear. All right, let's get up to the line of scrimmage. Nobody had any sense of urgency. Let's get up to the line of scrimmage, spike the ball, and get ourselves together. It just feels like instead of trying to put together a coherent locker room, Kevin O'Connell seems to want to do more of a better job of putting together his best version of the butterfly room from Toy Story 3. Just a room full of nice guys and we can all get along. Now, I will say that in his defense, I don't think it's doom and gloom. I don't think we should talk about, oh... A, a potential new head coach, I think you should still give him time. But also, if it doesn't work out as far as play calling, which I am going to go that route right now and say, maybe someone else should call plays. I, it, we're still seeing the same problems from last year, if not worse. But worst case, he could be the overseer of the locker room to motivate guys and say, hey, not a, just because you're a head coach doesn't mean you have to be the play caller. But someone else that just gets it. Someone else that understands the situation at hand, every possession, every snap. Now, the front office, the GM, Quasi Adolfo Mensa, that's a whole different situation. Too busy chasing dreamers instead of football players. And something I know about folks that are so analytically driven is... The human element be damned. All they care about are the results, the bottom line. So a word that they dry hump so much is data, data, data. Well, what have the results been so far? The interior offensive line, you knew that was an issue. Not putting in an inquiry to Isaac Sayamalu is a crime. Okay, you signed Dalton Reisner. You signed him after week two. You signed him late, and he wasn't even ready for week three. So maybe he'll be ready for week four after you're already 0-3. Specifically, the Chargers game. 
one of the main complaints for the defensive side of the ball for the Vikings was the lack of pass rush. Well, why is that? You had it somewhat from Daniil Hunter. And for this season, along with Hunter, you're also getting it from one of your inside linebackers, Ivan Pace Jr. But why is there such a lack of pass rush by the Vikings defense? Could it be that you prioritized signing an often injured, inconsistent edge rusher in Marcus Davenport? Well, what do you know? He essentially hasn't played at all this season. And you're relying on him to be the number two guy to Daniil Hunter. Who could have seen that coming? I said that in real time. That is not a good signing. We talk about the competitive rebuild. Where are we? We're clearly not competing, not at 0-3. But even on the rebuild side, what is it that you're really building right now? You look at the 2022 draft class. That's the worst draft class that I've ever seen in the 23 years that I have followed this team. Led by the most idiotic trade I've ever seen as far as trading back 20 spots, passing up on God. Can you imagine what it, what this defensive line would look like? How much better the defense would be with Jordan Davis or Kyle Hamilton? Instead, trading back 20 spots, getting nothing in return. That's another word, but not just data, but value. Oh, value this, value that, especially during the draft process. You got no value in return and ended up taking a safety who right now is what? Fifth on the depth chart behind Hitman, behind Cam Bynum, behind Josh Metellus, behind Theo Jackson. He can't even get on the field beyond special teams. The only saving grace you have in that draft class as of right now is a Caleb Evans. And he's he's a solid corner. Outside of that, you've got nothing. You neglected the interior offensive line. This defensive line is a joke. What are you rebuilding for the future? What do we really have to work with outside of the pieces, most, most of which came from the previous regime? And the silver lining is to say, well, you know what? Best case, we're tanking for Caleb Williams. You win as few games as possible. We're going to look at the having the best opportunity at the best quarterback prospect for this franchise moving forward. The problem is, what has Kwesi Adafo Mensa shown you to give you assurances that he absolutely won't screw it up. Say the Vikings had the number one pick in the draft. This is a fast break, open court layup. You take Caleb Williams. Who's to say that this dude won't trade back and take a corner? I ch- I would love to hear Quasi Adafo Mensa speak on the results of what he has put together for this team why he thinks it's working out so far. I would love to hear it because so far it's been pathetic. 